Libraries. They have supplied their communities with reading materials for their patrons' different interests across generations. They have helped increase literacy rates and improve the lives of the people they serve. But how could libraries best serve communities in rural areas of the country filled with poverty? What role could libraries play in helping citizens as the United States of America was dragged through one of the most difficult financial times in its history, the Great Depression? Answers to these questions came in 1934 when the Works Progress Administration, the WPA, started the Pack Horse Library Project, which sent librarians on horseback throughout the countryside of eastern Kentucky to deliver reading materials. These pioneers crossed a frontier in literacy while the country attempted to help its citizens overcome poverty and see prosperity on the other side of the Great Depression. Ponies, Paperbacks, and Persistent Women The Pack Horse Library Project Chapter 1 Reading in Kentucky The rugged terrain of eastern Kentucky isolated it from much of the country. Many people in the area did not have access to books. The 1910 census reported that in rural Kentucky communities, 14% of the population was illiterate. The United States average was 8.1 at the time. People understood that literacy was a way to improve employability and to be informed citizens of the community and country. Because of this, starting in 1913, May Stafford collected money and received donations of books for the rural Appalachian Mountain Villages. She also taught young children in these rural communities how to read. Unfortunately, this project only lasted a year. Berea College, a school in rural Kentucky, sent out a horse-drawn book wagon between the years of 1916 and 1923. When these services ended, many people were once again cut off from the access to reading materials. In the years leading up to the project, Kentucky only circulated one book per capita, while other states circulated five to ten. The Kentuckians wanted to learn, but most did not have the means to. Stafford and Berea College's efforts were an inspiration for the Pack Horse Library Project. Chapter 2. The Great Depression. In 1929, five years before the Pack Horse Library Project began, the Great Depression hit the United States. During the Great Depression, consumer spending and investments dropped dramatically. There was a decline in industrial manufacturing and employment, leaving 15 million unemployed across the nation. In 1933, nearly 40% of the people in Appalachia were unemployed. Kentucky, which was already a poor state before the Depression hit, was hit especially hard by the closing of coal mines, a lifeblood of the Kentucky worker. The people of Kentucky struggled to find work and feed their families, but they saw the ability to read as a way to overcome their poverty. Chapter 3, FDR and the WPA. In 1932, at the height of the Great Depression, a Democrat, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was elected president of the United States. The country's unemployment rate was at 20 percent and he made it his mission to do something about it. His New Deal offered many solutions to help out-of-work Americans gain employment. One of these solutions was the Works Progress Administration. The goal of the WPA was to employ the citizens of the United States in different projects that would support local communities in the long run. Throughout its existence, WPA employees did jobs like building bridges, roads, public buildings, public parks, and airports. At the time, many Republicans across the country opposed the program because they believed it was a gimmick to earn more votes for Democrats, or because they saw it as a kind of handout for citizens. These dissenters, however, could not deny the success of the WPA. By the time it was phased out, the WPA employed 8.5 million Americans, working thousands of diverse jobs across the country. Chapter 4. Book Women In 1934, Kentucky's WPA State Director of Women's and Professional Projects, Elizabeth Fullerton, convinced the WPA to support a pack horse library project for the counties of eastern Kentucky. These pioneer librarians were at the forefront of the effort to raise literacy rates in eastern Kentucky. Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of President Roosevelt, supported the project too. In a 1938 January 12th entry in her My Day column, she wrote, The universal cry is for books and more books. In the same entry, she urged departments of education to donate books. She also asked that Americans look through their own libraries for donations. These horse-riding librarians were known as bookwomen. 
Early in the project, some riders encountered opposition from the mountain folks. These people were suspicious of outsiders bringing in unknown materials. But swiftly, the book women became loved by the communities they served. Patrons didn't have books on hand, and they were so isolated from the public libraries that the Pack Horse Library would be the first time many of them had ever checked out a book. The women would often read aloud to their patrons. This created a special connection between the riders and the people they served. The Paducah Sun Democrat reported that a seven-year-old boy with an injured back told his bookwoman, Learn me to read, and I won't be lonesome anymore. The bookwomen took their jobs as seriously as mail carriers would. They worked hard to find just the right book to bring to their patrons on each visit. Because the WPA provided money for salaries only, books were supplied entirely through public donations. In order to get donations, the librarians put ads for books and newspapers throughout the state of Kentucky and the rest of the nation. Riding in saddlebags and being read over and over again was not easy on the donated books. Oftentimes, when books were falling apart, the librarians would cut them up and make them into new scrapbooks. Because donations were so precious, nothing was wasted. Some pages were used to line the walls of mountain shacks. Others were cut up to use as bookmarks. The riding librarians had to supply their own horses. The librarians also depended on the locals for resources. Towns would set up facilities for the women as they rode through to pick up books needed for their routes. Places like churches, general stores, post offices, and community centers were common places for local library headquarters. Other librarians would man these outposts in order to load saddlebags for the book women with magazines, books, and scrapbooks. The women rode out at least twice a month, covering 100 to 120 miles a week on their route. The routes covered rugged terrain, and carriers made deliveries no matter the weather. They earned around $28 a month, which equals close to $495 today. Throughout its service, there ended up being almost 200 people serving the countryside. In 1936, Pack Horse Librarians served over 50,000 families, and by 1937, the bookwomen also served 155 public schools. Many of those Pack Horse Librarians would later talk about how the children and adults on their routes help them find positives in a tough time. My name is Mary Ruth Shooter Dieter. We traveled on the horses riding down in the mountains of Kentucky. We were so happy to get a book, tickled to death. We always sat under the big old chestnut tree. They didn't know how to read, so I read it and read it again so we could understand it. Chapter 5, Impact. In 1943, federal funding for the Pack Horse Library Project was cut, thus formally ending the project. Despite coming to an end, the book women of the Pack Horse Library Project left a mark on eastern Kentucky. By the end of the book project, illiteracy rates were greatly reduced. The 1950 census reported that Kentucky's illiteracy had dropped from 9.4% in 1920 to 4.3% in 1950. This was just slightly above the national illiteracy rate of 3.2%. The ability to read ensured that these citizens had access to more job opportunities. Access to reading materials continued to be a priority for Kentuckians as motorized bookmobiles were introduced in the late 1940s. Over the subsequent decades, Kentucky outranked every other state in the number of bookmobiles in their state. Additionally, Kentucky continues to have a higher than most literacy rate when compared to the United States average. Chapter 6, Conclusion Inspired by book carriers before them, the WPA started the Pack Horse Library Project, a program that had a long-lasting effect on eastern Kentucky. The Great Depression was a time of great despair, but it could have been much worse for those eastern Kentucky residents had it not been for the help of the Pack Horse Library Project. These courageous women served thousands of people of all ages across dozens of eastern Kentucky counties. For many, these women were a ray of light in a dark time. While stock markets were crashing, Reading was booming in eastern Kentucky thanks to the Pack Horse Library Project. So book woman, whoa, book woman.